All right, so for this video, we're going to look at some theorems about limits. This is only the very beginning of some theorems, so you should not be convinced that this is all there is to learn about theorems. This video is about the easy ones. All right, so we have a few limits here, and uh, these functions are functions, uh, particularly the first and second function, are functions you actually know a lot about. So we're going to remember that a limit is asking us what happens to the outputs of the function when the inputs get really close to a particular value. So the first one is asking what happens to the outputs of the function 3x plus 1 when the inputs get really close to x equals 2, but not at x equals 2. All right, so we actually know a lot about this function, y equals 3x plus 1. It's a line. A line with a y-intercept of 1 and a slope of 3, so you can think about what that looks like. And when you think about that function, you might say, well, what happens when x gets close to 2 is really the same thing that happens when x is 2. And I want you to remember that that's not really what limits are about, but for some really nice functions, sometimes I call them well-behaved functions, uh, functions like this, we can kind of think about uh, what happens with the functions by sort of using uh, the idea that what's happening when we're close to x equals 2 is really the same thing that happens when x is 2. All right, so there's actually some theorems in our textbook that talks about that. Uh, they're in section 2.2 of our textbook, theorems 1, 2, 3, and maybe a few others. I also have a handout uh, that says some limit theorems, and it has some of those theorems plus some more that aren't actually in our textbook. But uh, wherever you look, there's a theorem about polynomial functions, and it talks about limits of polynomial functions, and it says that the limit of a polynomial function, which this is an example of, is really just equal to the output of the function at that point. So if I actually just think about plugging in x equals 2, I'm doing kind of a substitution shortcut. And I should remember that this is not really what limits are about, right? The limit is really not, not, not about what happens at x equals 2. It's about what happens when x is close to 2. But sometimes you have these really easy to work with functions, and so there's nothing weird going on on this graph around x equals 2, so you can use this substitution shortcut. I'll also talk about them like that, substitution shortcut. Theorems. You should keep in mind that this doesn't work for all limits, but when it works, it's pretty handy to use. All right, so actually all three of these examples we can do with substitution shortcut theorems because they're all well-behaved. They don't do anything weird at the place that we're approaching, and so the way they act when we're close to that x value is the same way they act when they're at that x value. All right, so on this one I need to be a little careful about parentheses here, but this one, again, is a nice parabola, y equals x squared. I know what the graph of that looks like. I can think about when x is close to negative 2 is really doing the same thing that it does when x is negative 2. So I'm really just doing a substitution shortcut. Again, this is not what limits are about. These are shortcuts that work sometimes. When they work, they're great, but you should keep in mind that's not the only thing there is to limits. All right, this next one, um, this function sine of x over x does have some domain issues at x equals 0. I can't just, I wouldn't be able to use this substitution shortcut if I were letting x approach 0. But the x value that it's asking me about here is not any place where this function is doing anything weird. So I can also use a substitution shortcut here on this one and go ahead and evaluate this. All right, so sine of pi over 2 is 1. And so I have 1 over pi over 2, or if I simplify that, I'll get 2 over pi. All right, so big deal thing to remember, this is a great shortcut when it works, but if you try to plug in the number and you say, oh, I can't, or I get something that's undefined, that doesn't mean that there is no limit. It just means that you have to use something else. So if you can't use a substitution shortcut theorem, you have to use something else to think about that limit.